Okay, yeah. so the talk is titled Labor Office in Nome, and we have Michael Meeks over here. Thank you very much. Ah, the romantic feeling. Look at that. Fantastic. Well, thank you for coming. Um, good. Let me try and get to the next slide, if I can. Uh -huh, perfect. So this is what I'm going to talk, talk about. Um, so I'll just uh, I'll let you see that. Uh, the first thing to point out, really, is that I'm a total fraud. You know, I, I haven't really done it much of the GNOME integration work, if, well, if really at all uh, much, unfortunately. Um, but these wonderful people have. So uh, Quaylorn uh, has been doing some fantastic work. And this is a big Red Hat uh, uh, success story, I guess, and also on the flat pack. So I'll talk about uh, really what they've done. So let me, let me first do, do some of that. Um, I, I did the original GTK3 port uh, primarily for Broadway uh, to, to get the online magic in browser stuff way back in the day. And uh, I'll show you, the, show you the, uh, the culmination of that in the uh, end of the talk, if I can. Um, but otherwise, uh, Quaylon has really picked this up and, and done just some amazing things with it. So one of the great things about GTK is it allows us to uh, target uh, all sorts of platforms like, like Wayland and uh, X simultaneously, which is, which is really nice. So uh, for, for GTK3, um, LibreOffice becomes dynamically a uh, GTK app, really, a GNOME, a GNOME app. So uh, we switch out our windows, and we put uh, GTK windows in the top level. Actually, everything you see inside LibreOffice happens inside a GTK grid, inside a GTK event box. And then, uh, unfortunately, it sort of gets a bit bad uh, below that. There's a GTK fixed that we horribly mangle and mash, mash stuff into. Um, you may also have a GTK menu bar. If you've got a menu bar in your thing, that's actually a native GTK widget uh, being used there, which helps for, for lots of things, uh, system integration. Also, all the context menus are, are GTK menu bars. Um, there is hope for pushing some of these widgets further down the stack and using um, you know, GTK buttons and things in dialogue. So actually, though you may not know it, underneath the hood, uh, LibreOffice is using Glade or the GBuilder uh, XML description for all of its dialogues these days. And we've got rid of our, our horrible, antiquated uh, resource file uh, syntax with its 16-bit identifiers, manually hard-coded and defines and compiled. And um, it used to be the case that to move a, a button around in the dialog, they were all, it wasn't laid out. They were fixed, nailed on the screen in exactly that place. So to, to move it, you had to go and tweak numbers somewhere. And all of the, all of the widgets were effectively sized for the longest string in the translation. Um, German's quite a good long language, so I, I don't know, you can, you can look at that. Um, and, and, and so this produced a UI that was very spacious, you know, it felt very roomy in most languages. There's lots of horizontal white space, um, but it didn't look very good. Um, so, so luckily now we can tweak that. We have our own um, GTK-like uh, layout system that interprets those uh, GG Builder magic uh, descriptions and so on. Um, so there's some funky work that could be done, actually, to reuse uh, platform-native widgets there. Um, more actively, obviously, we use the, the currently the theming, theming API is for better or worse. Um, yeah. So inside, anyway, I, I digress. Inside this contents widget, there is this. Uh, yeah, uh, we, we render it all ourselves. And, and one of the reasons for that is the GTK uh, three has a very nice model whereby a rendering is not immediate. Um, it's 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 deferred. So uh, you know, if you press a key, um, the application works out should invalidate a certain area. That area is re-rendered and, and drawn to the screen. Of course, this is all actually lies because in the GL world, you know, everything is, is, is re-rendered, but, but either way. Um, the problem with LibreOffice is, of course, that it's a very old code base, and it's it used to, when you pressed an A, actually render an A immediately on the screen in the callback for the A key press, um, which is quite exciting, actually. Getting, getting access to those contexts and things just can't be done in, in the modern world. So we have to have a back buffer. So every window is backed by a Cairo in-memory surface, and we whack the A on that, and we queue and invalidate. And when we get a draw, we just blit, uh, blit data out to that. And that works pretty well. Um, it turns out, luckily, the Mac suffered similar problems years before and used the same method. And so it's at least reasonably uh, debug stable. It uh, works nicely. And uh, good to see synergies between Macs and other things. Ah, best dad, where have you been all my life? You know? <laughs> Fantastic. <clears throat> so OpenGL is another nice thing that we get for free, I guess, from um, GTK3. Um, so we can just pull our GTK GL area in. Um, you know, when we want to start rendering GL on top of this thing, we can throw away our horrid back buffer, and we can reparent this GTK GL area into this GTK fixed, and uh, do a whole load more uh, aggravation and hassle. Although, to be fair, LibreOffice has a whole lot of cross-platform dynamic binding magic to try and deal with OpenGL. So, um, actually, by default, we use OpenGL to render on Windows, and we render all our text and all our shapes in clever shaders, and it's all highly accelerated if you have a GL that works. 
unfortunately, um, getting these things to work is a real pain. And uh, at least in, in the real world, you know, there's some, some horrible things that have happened there. So for example, in C++, I mean, I, I happen to be increasingly a C++ fan, um, you can use guard objects. And so around all of code that uses OpenGL, we use guard objects, um, which increments a reference count when you go into the zone and decrease it when you go out. And if that zone is odd, that counts when we crash, we disable OpenGL. Uh, we do the same for OpenCL, um, because it turns out the, uh, the Intel software OpenCL implementation on Windows on a whole lot of platforms crashes as soon as you ask it its version. So it's kind of hard to blacklist, and uh, you know, given it's only a software driver, you know, it's not even like a million lines of whatever. To, you know, so this, all of these embarrassments around. But at the end of the day, the hope is that we try and use the, the nice accelerated stuff. And epoxy, yeah, so this is another nice thing. So epoxy is really cool. Um, so this thing called Glue, if you've ever used OpenGL. And Glue then allows you to use lots of different versions of OpenGL and dynamically see what features there are there. Unfortunately, Whilst it has all of this DL opening, symbol hooking stuff, you still have to link to libgl, which is really silly. Um, and luckily, Epoxy fixes this. So we can drop that linkage, linkage and work nicely on embedded systems just by removing those bits of packages or, or whatever, right? You, you don't need to drag all of this huge, huge stack in. What else? GStreamer. Yeah, yeah, so uh, GStreamer. <clears throat> so uh, I, I did some of the GStreamer work uh, back in the day, actually, with uh, uh, two god eggs ago, something like that. With Tim or someone, I think. And, um, but either way, GTK Sync hides a lot of the awfulness here. So, so particularly between X11 and Wayland, again, we can reuse a GTK to do that, and all as well. Um, threading. So one of the problems with LibreOffice is our threading model. We, we have a whole load of dynamic scripting stuff, which is cool. So you can write in Python and Java and whatever. But um, we export our, our widget toolkit there so that you can create little graphical user interfaces. Turns out to be quite useful if you want someone to, someone to do integration. So, Let's take Munich City Council. They have all this wonderful mail merge stuff, you know, and you're sending letters to people constantly, you know. So the letter needs to read, dear sir, we have repossessed your house. Terribly sorry, Bill, right? Or something. And there's a button you can press for that, right? That's cool. And there's a little widget and a dialog. Um, the problem is that the API that uh, we expose assumes that you can use the toolkit from any thread. And of course, you can only use one thread at a time. You know, there's a nice safe lock around that. And this worked very well with GTK 1 and 2 and 3. Um, <clears throat> but it's a bit difficult to, uh, to get rid of this, uh, this feature after it's there, right? There's a whole load of uh, documents even that you could load and, uh, and run this thing. And uh, there's this GTK threads enter leave stuff, which is actually very small. There's only you know, like 20, 30 uh, of these in GTK. And these allow us to know when the toolkit is re-entering itself, primarily from the main loop. So if you have a file picker, for example, the file selector, we like to throw out the GTK file selector. Uh, LibreOffice uses the glib main loop. Uh, so we fire that thing up, and you know, you, you, it starts filling itself with files. But during that, there's a whole lot of asynchronous I.O. callbacks that come in and say, oh, I want to update the GUI. And the problem is we have no control over that. That happens inside GTK land somewhere else. Problem is, meantime, while that thing's happening, another thread can be talking to the toolkit. So, up until three, we, including three, we had this beautiful hook, uh, GDK thread set lock functions, where we could hook these uh, threads enter and leave, and we could make sure that everyone was safe. Nothing crashes randomly. Uh, you know, there's, there's only one person using the toolkit at once. Um, and it's catching that GTK use of itself, uh, asynchronous use, that's something that is really, really critical to us. So if you see Benjamin somewhere, you know, please encourage him you know, to, uh, to restore. And actually, amusingly, this was just removed by some um, random um, newbie as part of the deprecated removal thing. So anyway, <clears throat> discussions go on along these fronts. There's basically nothing we can do uh, to, to solve this. And, and I guess if you, if, you, if you look back, there's a whole load of good things about GTK, good things about how we can integrate with it, and good things that we can do um, in terms of you know, reusing Wayland support. We don't have to go and write a whole Wayland integration into to LibreOffice. And we still have a raw X integration, so we can run on X with nothing, right? Uh, which is great, but we would love to kill that. It's a maintenance nightmare. And we really don't want to be forced into the, the world where we have to write a new GL thing or, uh, uh, you know, for Wayland, a new GStreamer thing for Wayland or LibreOffice to, uh, and create our own toolkit. Um, but if we can't use a file selector without it crashing the application, we'll have to go the KDE way. So in the KDE world, uh, they do something different. They actually have a separate binary that they execute that launches the file, file pickup. And that's really cute and elite and you know, all, all that sort of stuff. But it leaves a whole load of life cycle 
transient modality focus nightmares are behind the scenes because as you load a file, it really runs a different application, which then should pop up over yours and sit there, and when you go OK or cancel. And th some of these things leak, and the light, it's just a nightmare. So please don't make us go there. That would really suck. Um, right, what else can I say? Flat pack, perfect. <clears throat> Woohoo! Yes, there's a lot of flat packing going on around the place. I've even uh, got the icon, which you can see uh, looks very nice, doesn't it? The, uh, the white on white is particularly good for the logo. Anyway, so uh, we have a flat pack, and it's based on GNOME 324, um, supposedly. It has all the localizations, so you can download it and run it in, you know, Nastalik or whatever it happens to be. Um, and uh, it's beautiful. Um, so it's the latest LibreOffice, and it's easy to get and deploy, which is cool. Um, I'm, uh, I wrote the caveats, and then I talked to Ned Richards, who, who was saying, um, you know, all of this is fixed already, like the whole clicking on links and getting them to launch in the browser. So one of the ways we can make it small enough that it fits in a flat pack is uh, to remove the online help. So the online help is staggeringly large and also not terribly useful. Um, so, you know, there's so many features in LibreOffice, you know, sort of million lines of user interface, um, and there's so many com complexities to that that you can't really describe them all in great detail. But even then, when you translate them all, it turns into just, just something really, really vast. So we didn't put that in there. Uh, we put a link in the, uh, uh, the help menu that then goes to a website. And my, my hope is that it now actually launches uh, you, the URL, which would be fantastic if people can, uh, can read the help. Um, there's no JRE bundled, so uh, you, know, you, you only have the options of the built-in Python or Star Basic, you know, so, uh, or VBA, where, where we support that. Um, but Java applets don't work, so you know, another tragedy in the, uh, the Java thing. <clears throat> One of the nice things about LibreOffice, of course, is that we already do a lot of work to solve the ISV problem. I'm always encouraged when other people come and realize that there actually is an ISV problem on Linux. That's, that's always extremely um, helpful for me. And uh, so we, we're already dynamically opening loads of libraries on the system. If you don't have GTK3, we can use GTK2. If you don't have GTK2, we can use KDE3 or 4 or RAWX. And we supply all those things. We compile them, we ship them, we run them, and we dynamically detect them. Uh, similarly, you know, like GStreamer 1, 1, 2, I don't know, th there's lots of different versions of these things. And again, we, we try and deal open and scrape around on your system to find your scanner, to find your, all this other stuff, and to try and cope with horrible, horrible changes, say, in the evolution address book API. There's this great long list of, um, you know, which libraries you can deal open, which symbols are randomly changed for no good reason. And, and the versions, you know, uh, you know, Debian loves to bump versions. Nothing, nothing they like better. And so there's a great long list of, you know, sort of 10 of these uh, just to get your evolution address book uh, mail merge thing working. But anyway, so we already do lots of work here, but it's nice to see other people coming along. And I think one of the particular highlights here is, I think, App Image. I think I should just, I think I should just call out App Image because, you know, they're encouraging people out there to, um, to download random files off the internet, mark them executable, and run them. And I th what could possibly go wrong? And, and I would point out that these things are totally unsigned, uh, typically, or if they are signed, there's no real good way of verifying them. Um, and you know, I think that's only one step away from the, hey, to install NVIDIA binaries, simply type this, sudo wget da 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 pipe right, you know? And yes, anyway, good stuff, huh? So I, I think we're all doomed to reinvent the wheel again and again and again. Um, but my hope is always that it gets better. But you never know your luck. Um, who has read Jamie Zawinski's Cas Cascade of Attention Deficit Teens uh, paper? Really? Ah, oh, well, I will summarize it for you. Jamie Zawinski, who, who was uh, very important in Netscape and creating the, the, the original browsers uh, in the world, <coughs> said uh, he, he got very annoyed because someone had just closed his bug uh, uh, with uh, I don't know if it's fixed, try the new version, we've rewritten everything. And, uh, and he said that this is quite typical of free software, and then in free software version 0.8 is, is succeeded typically by version 0.8, um, and another version 0.8 of the, of the rewrite, you see, and you never quite, uh, quite, quite get there, um, which is quite comic. Um, you know, and as a bitter and twisted old man, uh, I, I've seen quite a lot of this going on. Anyway, documents. I don't know where that came from, it just sort of uh, spewed out, but do, do read it, it's quite, it's very funny, and, and, and consider it as you consider rewriting um, evolution in Vala, because it's 10 times better, or, or whatever. Um, right, LibreOffice Kit, yes, yeah, so we've ripped the middle of, of, of LibreOffice out, and we put it in a thing called LibreOffice Kit, um, which, is, which is trendy, obviously, it's got a uh, kit on the end. And uh, I, I think actually it's a bit passe by now, isn't it? I probably need a hub on the end, or something like that, or uh, I don't know. Yeah, io.io, .io. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, 
So uh, we can put LibreOffice inside GNOME documents, and that's great because uh, you know, these document liberation people are out there reverse engineering the most evil file formats in the world. And let me tell you, there are many that are very evil. You know, like this, this whole idea of having structured records with, in a binary file format with a known length is, is foreign to many people. You know, the geniuses at IBM hard-coded all of these fixed length records into their, into their file formats everywhere, for example. Um, but if you want to view those documents on your machine, if you want to be able to edit them there, uh, we can do that. Um, you know, we'll increasingly crazy a list of things. Quark Express is coming. Uh, Google Summer of Code a student is toiling away at this even now. And uh, some of these people, you know, you write to Adobe and say, please, please, can we have some documentation? They go, oh, God, that file format. Oh, yeah, you know. Oh, yeah, it's pretty bad. No, yeah, no, we can't do anything for you. Um, some of the other people who are particularly evil, not mentioning any names, but uh, write pieces of software that do popular diagramming uh, things for very large companies, and they record a cyclic redundancy check in their file so that if you change a single bit, it won't load if it's not exactly how they like. Of course, undocumented, um, which, which makes interoperability a bit of a challenge. Um, anyway, I digress. Uh, LibreOffice Kit allows you then to load in GNOME documents, and there's some cool stuff there. Actually, there's editing functionality there that's only a single flag away. I think it was turned off uh, a year or so ago because, well, it was not terribly uh, stable. But since then, we've done a huge amount of work to make it better for uh, Collabora Online. Um, so that should be easy to turn on. There are some fun things like spreadsheets just making it better with row and column headers, allowing you to see functions and so on. All of the API is there. It's some really stuff, I easy stuff. Uh, there's some, some low-hanging fruit there. And we're eager to get people to uh, uh, you know, volunteer and to create new editor UIs. So you know, obviously, we know a lot because we've been playing with Office Suites for a while. But we're probably clueless in terms of user experience. You know, as, as any UX person will tell you, you, know, you remove all the functionality and replace it all with a button marked make money or have fun, and then just click the button a lot. Right? So, so you could create that UI for us, you know, a triumph of engineering, and um, uh, include it uh, in, in, in Tikanome. So do, do just get, get involved. There are lots of cool new things that we could do like that. I'll just rush through some stats. So who is committing what? I guess basically uh, Red Hat Collabora volunteers in terms of the, the number of uh, patches, and then uh, some more. Uh, individuals, of course, that's the, the volume of commits. By committers, there's just a huge number of cool kids out there doing stuff, you know? Small patches, improvements, cleanups, fixes, all sorts of things all over the place. The big green block there is, is just volunteers getting involved in the project, which is, which is cool. Uh, so this says 5.4, and then I start with a 5.3 feature highlights. Anyway, some, some nice new things here. So one of the key things is half bars. I've got a slide about that at, uh, next, next slide. Open type everywhere. Um, some pretty nice graphite integration. Um, but also just nice things, starting to use the sidebar more. So change tracking, um, slide properties, page layout stuff. Um, there's a thing at the bottom, which is um, transnational secure collaboration, something or other, TSCP. Uh, this is uh, done for the Dutch military. And uh, they basically want to be able to copy text out of a confidential document into another document, and suddenly that document becomes infected with confidentiality. You know? It gets a huge watermark saying, confidential. And you know, it then can't be mailed out of the building unless it's signed by a brigadier general or something, right? Digitally. Um, so there's a whole load of digital signing stuff then to, uh, to make this, this pretty nice, and um, work is ongoing there to do, do all sorts of uh, par per paragraph um, signing and, and, and fragments of text so that you can it's not DRM, it's not enforced, but it's a very helpful tool to not screw up, basically, um, which is good. Uh, status bar and calc, this is particularly useful uh, because, well, people like to uh, do sums and averages and, and all sorts of stuff. Um, so text, look at this. I think at the top right we have Nastalik. There's a particularly exciting shaper from the Graphite people that's doing just uh, crazy madness with this uh, Urdu uh, uh, font, then we have, uh, you know, someone's turned their monitor around at the side here. Um, so, so one of the things you can't see here is that perhaps these are on different platforms. Um, and just getting uh, shaping consistency across all platforms is, is really not, not terribly trivial. So using half bars um, is very helpful there, uh, having, having the same text everywhere. And that's, that's really good to get that in by default. In, in 5.4, it will not be possible not to use that. Uh, and we're still struggling with text rendering. You know, so we have Glyphy, you know, that we have, we're eager to, uh, you know. Um, actually, we have some Glyphy integration, but there are problems uh, you know, trying to uh, understand it. Um, but uh, they're entirely ours, no doubt. Um, but uh, also just trying to get a decent text rendering story, particularly with printing on Windows. Printing on Windows is the disaster area, because the APIs assume essentially that you're rendering pixels in a large space. I don't know if you, you know, like there's just a very big screen, and you draw your document in pixel coordinates, and it comes out on a sheet of paper. And we really hate those APIs. 
Uh, so we need to be doing uh, something about that. <coughs> oh, uh, this is, uh, yeah, font, font uh, uh, property sport or something. I forget what these are, but these, these caps versions versus not versus whatever, uh, just font features are built into, uh, built into the font. So what else? 5.4 has some nice new things. So pivot charts is one of the much wanted features. Uh, Calabro have just finished doing that for Nantes. It's a, a local French government, which is kind of nice. Uh, watermark dialogues, again, uh, so you can interoperate with Windows watermarks and, and you know, add these things quickly. It turns out watermarking is something really uh, key. People like to print stuff out, hand it to people with a watermark saying, don't hand it to anyone else. Um, EMF, so there's a whole load of horrors around EMF. EMF and EMF Plus are essentially a binary serialization of the Windows API for rendering. Um, and it's really quite that simple. You know, uh, it, I'm sure they render very quickly on Windows, but um, we have to try and understand these, unwind them, their weird transform coordinate systems and map them to something we can render. And so there's some, been some big improvements in 5.4 there. More chart palettes, uh, open PGP signing of ODF. So Zib have uh, done some work here uh, to make it easier to, uh, you know, be sure the documents are actually um, assigned and make it easier uh, to sign them. So I think that's pretty much that, which leaves me five minutes to tell you about LibreOffice Online, or I call it Collabor Online because we did all the work, but uh, it's just me. Um, so we have uh, HTML and JavaScript in the browser. It's much like GDK Broadway. It's really inspired um, by that and seeing what was possible there uh, with WebSockets and so on. So thanks to Alex, who is not here. Um, and uh, just, just some great stuff. We use a thing called the WAPI protocol, which um, allows us to be a very much a, a stateless LibreOffice provider. Um, so other people do the storage, other people do the authentication, um, which is really nice. And we outsource that. I mean, here are some open source uh, people we've, we've rounded up and uh, helped uh, to implement uh, this. And in 5.4, there's a whole load more things. So your responsive UI, uh, you know, lots, lots of stuff. You can read the list there. I just thought I'd try and demo it. I think I have a, uh, you know, I have several screens of black text, which is, which is good. And um, it shows you I'm still connected to programming, so, you know, some, somehow. And, uh, you know, here it is. I don't know, um, I, maybe I should zoom in. That's probably a good idea. Except my screen and my mouse are... Yeah, is that visible? You know, so, um, no? Oh, perfect. Uh, so I can probably move this off the screen over here and it'll be visible. Ah, perfect, good, good, good. Uh, so, hello world. Ah. So this guy's an island, and I'll show you the horror debugging mode so you can see how it works. Um, you know, so as I'm typing, um, it's essentially rendering tiles and sending you these, these chunks of, uh, well, literally pings at the moment with text in. And um, the nice thing about that, of course, is that uh, you, know, you can get quite, you get high quality uh, layout, you get uh, you know, some, some pretty, uh, uh, pretty functionality, and you get basically the whole feature set of, of uh, LibreOffice. So if I, you know, uh, you get your nasty balance tables and your footnotes and your WYSIWYG layout uh, absolutely as, as you would uh, your half buzz rendering. So, you know, it looks exactly the same uh, everywhere. And, uh, you know, that, that, that's pretty nice um, in some ways. So what else? Uh, you know, slides, editing, and collaborative editing as well. I think that's one of the key features. Let me see if I can, um, uh, let me see if I can do that. Oh, uh, it's very important to see this guy, yeah? So, uh, yeah, I think uh, in terms of political comment, this is the solution to the world's problems, you know? Um, maybe not. Um, right, so uh, let, me, let me just try and do some uh, co-editing for you, because uh, that's always fun. Uh, let me grab this and do this, and then maybe I can move this over here. And then now I'm going to have to resize it. Uh, so I think that's this one. La, 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 la. Oh, so we see two users. I don't know if you can see two users at the bottom of the screen here. And unfortunately, it's me and me. I'm a narcissist. I love to talk to myself. As you said to Narcissus, watch yourself. Sorry, it's a terrible classical joke, but uh, you know, what can you do? Uh, this is me typing here, and I can't actually see it over there. Well, that's a shame, isn't it? Let me try and put it up here. Welcome to Guadec. You know, ah, look at this, and this is beautiful. Ah, well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, <coughs> And it's all free software, and you can download it now and have fun. You know, that's the, I guess that's the punchline. Um, the other nice thing is that you can, uh, you can actually run it on your own machine. So you, you don't need to hand your data off to a big evil corp um, of whatever flavor you like to uh, you know, uh, use. Um, it's actually uh, it's all there, and it's all on your uh, infrastructure, which is, which is nice. This is a very short talk. You may have noticed that, or it may have dragged on. Wake your neighbor up. It's nearly over. If you want to hear more, um, you can find an excuse to go to Rome and, uh, you know, focus at the conference really heavily. You know, not the beautiful architecture and the... Do you know, though, that a friend of mine was married in Disneyland, Florida, and I never realized that they have the most beautiful chapel in the world. It says so on their website, right? Anyway, 
if you'd like to see the most beautiful chapel in the world, just do come to Rome and, uh, uh, you know, anyway. So uh, the call for papers is even open. So if you want to come and tell us how you make GNOME documents rock, because it's actually really easy. You know, you can go away and do it like next week, rank the slides, publish the paper and get, you know, you probably, we might even fund your travel if it's good enough, right? So uh, do come and see us. It's going to be awesome. Um, so in summary, yeah, LibreOffice and GNOME, it's, it's a great match for the free software desktop. It's beautiful. It integrates nicely. It pa packs flat and all that sort of thing. And uh, there's lots of low-hanging fruit there to, uh, to get involved with. Uh, 5.4 is, yeah, just, it was released, I think, uh, yesterday, um, continuing to do just some, some great stuff uh, with free software, and coming to your cloud soon. So uh, thank you for your support, everyone that got involved with LibreOffice and, and cheered us on. Uh, we're really still appreciating that uh, five years down the road. It's great to be here. Thank you for your time. I think I started a little bit late, so there's probably time for a question. Is that, you think? <laughs> Alberto. Hey, uh, so I've got a, well, comment slash question and then Shoot. another comment. Uh, yeah. uh, so with regards to the file chooser, uh -huh. so um, as we move into the flat pack world, uh -huh. the file chooser is actually open off process anyway. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, um, So <laughs> anyway, but... Um, Good, uh, so that helps in that case. And yeah, and in any case, like if you're, if you're struggling with some GDK upstream work, tell Quaylan to tell Bosses. Yeah, yeah, I'll get Quaylon <laughs> to uh, so, so Quaylon doesn't seem to know what's going on in GTK4, um, right. which is fair enough. It seems to be a slow and maturing process. I'm just trying to yeah. get my patch reverted. It's only about five lines. Well, if you need any help, <laughs> if you need any help pulling the string, I shall, I shall. Know, you know, yeah, yeah. I think uh, I used to have commit access. I could just sort of sneak it in, maybe. Not. The the other thing you forgot to mention about the lovely relationship between LibreOffice and GNOME is the uh, Fleet Commander integration. The uh -huh, Fleet Commander. You see, because I don't know enough about it. Alberto, right. Fleet so Commander. Fleet Commander <laughs> is a. Uh, well, I've done Wadek talks before. I decided not to do it this mm -hmm. year. I'll do it next year and give an update. But basically. It's a, it's a large deployment configuration management system. Uh, so we are quite focused on dconf and the, you know, the G settings uh, mm -hmm. API. But um, the, uh, the awesome Stefan uh, Bergman, Bergman. Uh, awesome. Uh, did, the, uh, <laughs> did a, an extension to LibreOffice to actually understand dconf. So you can actually write configuration profiles from LibreOffice while editing the settings. Cool. And you store them. Uh, just like uh, Sabayon back in the days. Yeah, except Sabayon was this Python monster that was unmaintainable. Yeah, <laughs> this is much nicer. It's another <laughs> Python monster, but oh it's no. much nicer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Fair enough. Uh, but yeah, so now it means that LibreOffice can be managed in large scale uh, Linux desktop uh, awesome. deployments. Uh, which is and I really needed to know that because uh, people want this uh, badly. They, they email me and ask me about it. Um, time for one more? No? It's a break. Yeah, I mean, you can all leave if you want, but uh, you know, yeah, whatever. We can answer, answer questions if there are any. If there aren't, it's very easy. You know, I have a stock answer for non-questions. Cool. Oh, Bethdad, you see, the courage of the man. Here we go. Go for it. He's going to ask me something complicated I won't know the answer to. I, I, I bet you. you know, it's, I just need to read a book first. OK, yeah. I've got to ask, when is Google Docs integration coming? Google Docs integration. Ah, yes, that's a good question. So how do you want to integrate with Google Docs? What does it mean? <laughs> well, I, I don't want to rely on yet another uh, server provider. Uh -huh. So I want to store stuff in Google Drive at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So actually, I think you can probably do that now. Um, so, so one of the things I didn't rave about is the next cloud own cloud uh, stuff. So say you are a Windows shop and you have all of this Windows Server Active Directory evil in there. What you can do is you can, you can put a, a, a next cloud box into your machine or an own cloud one, and you can integrate with that Active Directory thing. So as you type, it looks up in your multi-dimensional cross-planet directory, and it'll complete people's names. And you can federate that, and you can pull in, I think, Google, Google Docs, Dropbox, goodness knows what. They, they, they basically suck this stuff uh, pretty hard. And the most beautiful thing about uh, Collabor Online is that it doesn't care about any of those things. I, I just, you know, life is too short um, to solve too many awful problems again, you know, like particularly when other people have done them. Um, so, so we just talk to them, and if you can, if you can browse to it in your next cloud and cloud front end, which could be stateless as well. I mean, it could back end onto your thing. Then, then we can we can edit those documents. That's no problem at all. And I, I mean, I, I assume, I hypothesize. Sir, over to you. Uh, follow up I'll repeat the question. Uh, just wait for the mic, please. 
Can we consume the Google Docs internal format? No, because it's not documented and it's not public. However, <clears throat> the good news is that it seems that Google Docs is now using LibreOffice to do its ODF export, which is awesome. And if you know people in that team, I'm still trying to find people in that team to talk to because they're, you know, because they, they need some love, you know? That, that's brilliant. And so, so the nice thing about that is that presumably, I mean, I'm just hypothesizing that under the hood, they're moving their internal format in a more of a Microsoft direction. <clears throat> that's the hypothesis. And so, th so then they can sort of just export as ODF through LibreOffice. And ironically, that provides just a much better result in terms of ODF and interoperability than using Aspose's native arse-like ODF export. So uh, yeah, brilliant. And, and another thing that you can use Collabor Online for is just actually file format shifting. So we have a number of customers that just use a REST service. They put you know, an, a doc and it comes back as an ODF or it comes back as a PDF, very common, a very common request. So lots of that. I want an invoice and I can't generate PDF easily, so let's just make a spreadsheet, put some stuff in it, shove it, get back PDF, mail it, bang, done. Very nice and sweet. Cool. More questions or not? Oh, mm, there's one at the back with a hat. Well, don't worry, just say it, and I'll, I'll, I'll try, and repeat it, uh, try and repeat it. Did I repeat your question? I did, I think. I try and remember that thing. It's funny how some people's questions turn only into, you know, like three words when they've actually taken 10 minutes to say. Oh, over to you, sir. Yeah, so GNOME has a Nextcloud instance that foundation members can use. Awesome. There was some discussion recently of having um, LibreOffice Online available yeah, there. you definitely should. And Excellent. I talked to a sysadmin at GNOME, and even provided him a key so he could use our supported version that's better and faster and smaller and prettier and that sort of thing. So yeah, we'd love you to use that. Great. Go for it. And uh, KDE are already using it. I just hate to erase that, but you know. <laughs> I don't know, you know. Uh, but we would love your feedback to, uh, to improve and uh, make it better. So yeah, there's, there's lots can be done there. Yeah. Sounds good? Well, thank you so much again. Oh, but, uh, See me at the end better. Okay, cool. Okay. Thanks, guys.